Thank you, Anna Palma, for that demo. I, I know there are probably a lot more questions, and that's a great segue. Uh, join our um, user interface working group on the third Wednesdays of the month at noon Eastern. We do the exact same kind of things, going through the UIs, recommendations on features that we would like. Not everything is easy to implement, but it's great to get all the ideas written down so that we can look at it a whole and figure out what direction we should go in. Um, there th when we created the user interface working group, we had three goals. First is to review the UI and functionality of I2B2, um, including how people customize this. It's an open source product and everyone does little tweaks on integrating it into their workflows and systems within their institutions. And it's useful to see how people do that. Second of all is there are other programs that are out there. So how do other programs address the problem of building queries, looking at analyses and so on? And then third is supporting ongoing efforts to improve and extend the UI. And that's exactly what uh, Anna Palmer was showing. So for example, early on in the working group a couple of years ago, we looked at some other programs like Picture, Glowing Bear, University of Washington's LEAF application. Again, these all do things slightly differently. This vertical query builder and Glowing Bear somewhat inspired the path that led to the latest I2B2 application. Some of the sort of simplicity of Picture um, people liked a lot and, um, and uh, uh, guided how we did search and search results. We've looked at very specific elements of the UI. So we spent a lot of time looking at how ontology is done. This was the original ontology search results in 1.711. And then we improved that quite a bit in 1.712. And then that further was evolved in the shrine ontology search. And then finally what Anna Palma showed, minus the um, clearing the uh, uh, concept type, but we'll get to that as we continue to improve these um, features. And we also look at overall things. So uh, the 1.7 UI to the new one has a much different look and feel. There's also lots of changes on the back end to modernize and remove dependencies on old libraries. So what we spent a lot of time on earlier this year is coming up with, we call the wish list of UI changes in 2024. Now, these aren't meant to be huge rebuilds of everything. It's more like low-hanging fruit, small features that are somewhat annoying or difficult for users, but we think that if we added that in there, it could actually add a lot of functionality. So the first, and I kind of categorize them over here. The first one are different ways of visualizing the results. So in the status, uh, query status results, there are three different ways that data can be visualized. One is a base account. Another is a bar graph, and a third are, is a table. Um, and each of these have their own sets of code in the UI. But you can imagine having many more of these for different kinds of search results. One of them are maps. This is important in a shrine application where you're showing where the sites are on a geographical map, or within an individual I2B2 instance, where patients are. Yesterday we talked a lot about the public health mass CPR integration, and maps are really key to that, being able to see which towns or cities are having elevated um, uh, rates of infectious diseases. It's very difficult to understand when you're looking at a, just a table where uh, zip codes or cities are listed alphabetically. Being able to visualize that is really important. And you can do this. You can get breakdowns from the search results by geographic region, but we need a visualization on top of that to be able to display it. Another visualization that has um, been very popular, I really like, is something called tree maps. These allow you to visualize data that's in a hierarchical format. And our ontology is in hierarchical format. So any of our search results, like top 10 diagnoses or the top 20 medications that come back, you're just seeing how you can select those, but displaying those and putting it into the hierarchy of the ontology using tree maps is an uh, interesting way of displaying that. I'm not getting into tree maps here. Uh, we discuss it more in our working group. There's a lot of um, wish list items that kind of came out of the ontology working group, which we'll hear about next, but has corresponding um, components in the UI working group. So one of the things we did in 1.8.1 was move the term info below the actual browser so you can go through the ontology and see information about those ontology terms 
right away without having to flip between different tabs. Um, the information here, though, is more for an administrator right now. It's looking at the SQL behind the scenes, the ontology paths. There's other kinds of information be more useful for investigators. So in the same way as the search results have different templates for displaying results, you can imagine term info boxes having different kinds of templates depending on the concept type. Um, for example, um, retired concepts or concepts with special data quality notes might have a special note section. Concepts that have a date, you can have counts by year. Value-based uh, va uh, concepts like a laboratory test, you might show the distribution of the values of those labs. So these are all kind of information that'd be useful for investigators to know should they even drag and drop that item into their um, uh, query boxes. There's different kinds of ontology now. There's the basic terms, there's derived terms, there's computational phenotypes, there may be LLM driven concepts. So modifying those icons slightly to indicate the source might be useful for, um, for users. Um, these things aren't just on the front end, they're often back end functionality that's needed to display this information on the front end. There's just some simple usability items. Uh, people have been asking to be able to cut, select multiple ontology items and drag them all into the query tool or handling folders that have many, many children better. Right now, you just get an alert that says it's too big to open up that folder, but you, know, you could imagine different ways of handling that. Um, another pain point for ITB2 over the years has been modifiers. Um, we showed an example in the new UI of how we can drag different uh, uh, attributes of a medication into different query groups and then link them to a same instance or same encounter. Um, query timing, but that's not intuitive to users. They want to do something more like a laboratory test where you drag the concept over and just right click it and put in all the options that you want as opposed to having to build out this more complicated query. So I think we're going to be doing some mock-ups and some prototypes of what this might look like this year um, to, uh, to simplify how users build modifiers. Today it's so complicated that a lot of institutions just choose not to load modifiers into their I2B2. And that's somewhat of a shame because there's a lot of great information in the databases that are stored in modifiers. And if we had an easier way of querying it, that would be um, uh, very useful for people. And then there's just a long list of things that people have asked for. I won't go through all of them here. Join the working group. We'll go into some more details on this. I'll pull out just a couple of them because they're relevant to things that we've been talking about um, at this conference uh, the last two days. One of them is batch queries, being able to, instead of d designing a query, running it, waiting minutes for it to complete, then doing your next one, being able to automate a bunch of queries and just have them run. This is useful for the mass CPR use cases where they want to loop through lots of different infectious diseases and or loop through different time periods of geographic regions and it would be too complex to be able to do this one at a time manually. You want to be able to pick an item in your query. So here's a I dragged over zip code but I want to be able to iterate over that zip code um, and run multiple queries at once. Um, Another thing is advanced query types. In I2B2, you're building, the way it sets up, you're building ands of ors. People would sometimes like to flip that or do other kinds of queries, and it depends on the different research questions you're asking for. Um, we've had a lot of um, great question, uh, examples about that. Um, another one is sort of, um, uh, sort of query builder assistance or a kind of wizards that help you build out a query or previous queries that have already been defined that you can use as a starting point to build a new one. Once you get into complex temporal queries, it becomes difficult often for investigators to figure out how to do that. But if you give them an example of a query, uh, here's an example of how you would query diabetes patients who are on this medication, this laboratory test, then they can go and tweak it and that might be easier for them. And then a couple at the bottom, which we're actually working on now, um, additional options for downloading data. And in the latest version of ITB2 and coming out more, we have more options on how to define pivoting of tables and output options, and then leveraging LLMs to enhance the UI. So having investigators just be able to describe what they want to search for, and then it'll automatically build the query for you and can review that before you run it. 
So there's a lot here. I'm hoping to at least make some mock-ups or make some progress on some of these items. Um, join our working group. We'd love to hear the feedback of it. The stuff that comes out of this working group really does turn into new features inside of I2B2, and a lot of it is driven on requests and ideas from the community. So thank you. We maybe have three minutes for any um, comments or questions before we move on. Thank you, Griffin. Any questions? Oh. So as you know, we used a very old version of I2B2, and we like the modifiers a lot for buying material. Question being, um, how could uh, we improve uh, the inclusion of buying material? Like, I got one patient, got um, four samples, and a mouse model. This is crucial for any cancer project, and so people would like it a lot. If, it, if there would be an easy a possibility, like to search for any patient who has a sample of a certain characteristics, and they get the numbers and know the patients. Would, would this be? The same functionality, or yeah, I mean, uh, in the, in the Massey Power project I talked about yesterday morning, we have we want to link the EHR data to a biospecimen repository. So, part of that is extending the ontology to be able to query for those items. Um, uh, are you trying to return a count of the number of specimens or accounts the number of patients? Both. Both. So this spec that's we had that has come up in our uh, Massey Pure use case, and we have mockups of that. The main query tool in I2B2 returns counts of patients. That's kind of the unit over there. But with plugins and custom breakdown queries, you can do different kinds of things now. So you can define a breakdown being a number of specimens of different types. And your SQL can just be defined to return that, even though the main query is returning patients. Um, a lot of the UI features have corresponding backend stuff that's necessary. So we're not really talking about today, but there's a separate thing called the Committee on Technology that um, I lead within ITB2. And that committee brings together the different working groups where you know, we have an ontology request, what are the UI correspondence? things that would have to be done for that, and are there back-end changes that are needed. So topics like that is what we do in that other um, working group to see how do we pull the things together for certain use cases. And, and the second one, quickly, uh, people did ask for something like uh, hierarchical graphics, like Sunburst graphs. So if you're talking about Omob Odyssey, those guys like a lot, those uh, George Ripsack Sunburst mm -hmm. graphs, uh, like, a, like a diagnosis, treatment options, and outcome, for example. I think it should be it yeah. should be straightforward, and this would be in, a, in this, a shiny apps doing exactly that. So right, so um, it might be interesting thinking about that. There, there's a lot of new capabilities in the plugin architecture, and um, you know, again, we're not going through it here, but the the way the new web client actually works, you can have a whole separate website that's in a different browser window, and you can drag things from I2B to another thing. So you can have a whole separate website built on shiny apps, and you have a patient set that was defined in ITB2 and drag and drop that over and you can build your own sort of interface for it that doesn't have to be within the container of the yeah, ITB2 sure. client. It, it seems to be very interesting because the the Odyssey guys do that all the time in the Atlas um, tool pack. Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, I think okay. we're, we're done here. We'll take one more. Okay. Great. Can we have the breakdown of the queries like uh, for the, for a period of, for example, if I query for 2010 to 2020, can we have year-wise breakdown of the counts, aggregate counts for a concept? Yeah, that's, the, that's the batch query functionality that's been requested over here. So being able to get counts by year. Yes. Um, building that, you could build a somewhat complex SQL query to do that. I think probably a better way of implementing it is um, actually running multiple queries automatically, each one with a different time constraint, and then a you know, plug-in or visualization pulls all that together. So there, batch queries and br custom breakdowns have a lot of similarities, um, but one may be more appropriate than the other, and the, the, the time breakdown is a common request that we've been getting, and I think it's something to think about the best way of implementing it. Okay, thank you. All right, I think we're right, gonna- Thank you. Oh, oh okay. yeah. A question from the chat. Say it all, I mean, my, so our labor, the laboratory results, um, 
reference ranges from each performing laboratory able to be incorporated into the queries? The question is, can laboratory um, reference ranges be incorporated into the queries? So if you have laboratory test reference ranges defined in the metadata of your ontology, Dana Palmer shows it shows up when you, in the pop-up box where you set the values. So you can click, I want uh, elevated or um, normal reference range. You have to populate that. Um, you know, some sites it's easier or harder to get it. Another thing you have to think about is that reference ranges for certain laboratory tests vary greatly by the age and sex of the patients. And so it's not one single reference range. And it's not always clear how you would display that in one of those boxes. So it has, I2B2 has the capability to do that, but how you define those reference ranges in the ontology could be a little tricky um, and uh, it might vary by institution. Thank you. Thank you, Griffin. Any new Palma?